So, hi again, Dirk. Three months after. How are you? Yes, hello, Kai. Thanks. Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Has been an interesting time since then, uh, but also a, a very good time, actually, database-wise. Okay, that's a pleasure to hear. So, so why don't you tell us a bit, a bit more? Like you were, we were discussing this uh, migration of yours when we said that, hey, we want people, we want to help people migrate off MySQL to MariaDB, and we will have a server fest in, in Brussels at, at the time of FOSTEM, and that was February this year. And we, you, you, you then saw that that was in December last year, wasn't it? Yes, actually, um, your call for a guinea pig, as you said, it came just in the right time for us because we were in the process of planning such a migration away from MySQL 5.7. And so we thought this was a very good opportunity to just do the things and do them together with you in such a very special setup, I'd say, because um, you don't get such a chance um, every other month or something like that. So um, we were quite happy that this um, that we could do it this way. And so when we went um, in February to Brussels, we thought, OK, um, this will bring us forward in leaving MySQL 5.7 behind and moving to a really modern platform um, which is actively maintained, which is actively moved forward. And uh, so these were our expectations. And of course, we hope that we didn't come into too much hassle during uh, this migration that yes, so don't go southward. Let's be reciprocate and say that it was all these opportunities of, of doing things exactly at the right time. They don't come every day to us as well. So it was a very exciting thing to have you there. So we did a bit uh, of, of joint preparations uh, yeah. prior to, 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 to you coming. And then, uh, so how did it feel to, to, to get, I mean, uh, the audience should know and should look at the videos. We made videos and you made videos and they are quite exciting to see. So I think the, uh, the, the first and most important question is, is how, uh, like in one sentence, we'll go into details, but in one sentence, how has it been the last three months? It has been without any severe problems and it has been really a pleasure to work with the new system. Okay, so, um, uh, but usually when you ask these things, it, it's a yes, but, I mean, no migration goes without, entirely without <laughs> problems. So, so uh, even if you say you're overall happy and it's been a pleasure, so what's the but part here? Yes, as you might have heard, I didn't say it was without any problems. Of course, um, when you do such a huge migration, um, you can be prepared as good as you like. There will always be something that you oversaw or there will always be something that um, you haven't expected or you haven't planned for. And actually, of course, it was this way too. The one important thing is that we never had any downtime of our system. We never had any unexpected severe problems. Overall, things just worked smoothly and for the most part, things worked actually without any difference uh, from how they went before. There were one certain parts of the system. You might remember that when we prepared this stuff, we always talked um, about our reporting subsystem, which does some quite heavy database queries, collecting data, storing data into new tables. And uh, this is the only part of our system where much of the business logic is not done by the application, but is actually done by the database. And there we found that we had a certain performance uh, decrease um, when moving from MySQL to MariaDB. And it wasn't totally clear where this came from. Actually, um, this is a part where we do not use InnoDB tables, but where we were still with MyEsum tables. And um, 
Um, I think you suggested that we should move to the area um, uh, database yeah. engine uh, for these tables. Actually, we Certain did. Certain cases that does help. In, yeah, in our case. Your case wasn't certain. It's, it looks like that. Yeah, it didn't help. It, it, it was. It, it became not slower, um, but it didn't became as fast as it was before. But it could be that this is not really due to the database system having problems. But as I said, um, this is a very special setup that we have there. And it could very well be that our own um, um, queries um, were less than optimal uh, regarding indexes and regarding the way this whole stuff is designed internally. Anyway. As I understand it, it's a case where you have a nightly re report that takes yeah. many hours. Yeah, and we already knew that there was a problem with the overall scheme in which we do this because we collect data of um, some two or three years and build some reporting on this and store this reporting into new tables so that our customers can get information about usage of their car or uh, turnover of the, the fleet, etc. And this this data is always collected for this whole time range, so these two or three years. Um, while normally... It's just yesterday that changes. So indeed, it's normally it's... Years. It's only some days where it changes. And we already knew that this was um, not very well designed. And we already saw that performance degraded because data become more and more in this whole stuff, totally independent of the database. So um, when we now had the situation that things became quite a bit um, slower than we hoped. We are talking about a performance degradation of a 20 to 30 percent um, at this um, at this stage. Uh, we decided that we redesign the whole system and we are in this redesign and um, our plan is or our target is not to compute everything each day but only to compute the things that actually have changed. And um, this is um, the, the most of this is already implemented. We are currently in the process of um, uh, running tests of the new code and see whether there are any regressions um, because, of course, this has to change the algorithms and the internal structures a bit. But things look quite well, and we hope that we will release this within the next two or three weeks. And then, actually, we do not have a performance decrease so that we do not need seven, that we needed seven hours, and now we need uh, some nine to ten hours. But with the new code, um, we will have um, only one to two hours for this operation. So we will have an, a vast increase of stuff. And mm -hmm. actually, this hopefully will give us the opportunity to get rid of this whole area um, database engine stuff altogether and switch to the InnoDB engine that we use for the rest of the system, um, just because we also change other things, we make the transactions shorter. And um, after all, doing this with MariaDB um, has the advantage that we know that we develop for a system which will evolve in itself. So we do not optimize for something which we know is outdated, like that old MySQL 5.7, but we develop on a modern platform um, and on a platform uh, which will evolve. Okay, so, so that's good to hear. What then about updates, like ongoing updates? I suspect that that uh, you you will not stay on the same dot release, same point release forever. Have you have you got plans for that? Yes, and this is actually a thing that becomes much easier and much better now that we have MariaDB because with MySQL. Um, updates were not that often as one hoped. And once you had the system up and running, you stayed with it. So actually, we have not used the most current version of MySQL 5.7, but a version a bit older. But with MariaDB, we know about the update cadence, about your update plans. There is a structure behind this, and we uh, can follow it. And we took the chance to build um, to build 
a management layer around our database server, which allows us to perform these updates almost automatically. So we have already updated you. You know, when we were in February, the actual the current version was uh, MariaDB 10.11.6. Yeah. And um, since then, 10.11.7 has been released and we already updated I would say all our servers and um, we fine tuned this update process while doing this, while updating our server instances from the .6 to the .7 release. And with this updated management scripts, I'm quite confident that once we um, update to 10.11.8, this um, operation will be almost automatically and um, we think that we'll um, that we can um, continue this trail after that for each new release that we um, are gonna update to actually it helps tremendously that MariaDB um, usually does not need any changes to the on file uh, on the on disk files while performing an update so my next question would be about so we say incompatibilities, or perceived at least incompatibilities between MariaDB and MySQL, and, and one of those uh, which have been uh, mentioned in, in various uh, places is the GTIDs, the Global Transaction. Yeah. ID. So what's yeah. your take on them? Well, actually, um, I know from the documentation that there are incompatibilities, but um, as we knew about this um, in, before we started this whole migration process, we decided that we will not um, migrate our MySQL database to global transaction IDs, but we postpone that until we have migrated to MariaDB and only then start with global transaction IDs. So when we did the migration, we actually have, did not have global transaction IDs yet. We were still with the old file position based um, replication scheme. And that um, did work. But as you know, when you when you are familiar with this stuff, this is always a bit um, a bit uh, um, cumbersome when you want to change the uh, well, replication awesome. directions. You always have to look where is it, um, where is the position on that server, that new server that you want to replicate from, etc. And um, so one of the first steps that we actually did after we finished the migration um, stuff was switching to global transaction ID. And using the documentation um, of MariaDB, this uh, actually was not a problem at all. It was a very smooth transition and we did it on a test um, on a test cluster in the first place to see whether things really work as we think them to work. And then uh, we migrated our uh, production cluster, which has a quite um, yeah, it's not a really difficult or really complex architecture, but it has a first layer cluster and then a, a second layer uh, replicating server from which other servers are replicating, etc. So you have to think a bit how to organize it, but it was no problem. And actually, we migrated the whole thing to global transaction IDs, MariaDB style. And it works tremendously well. And we already switched master ones to perform updates and upgrades on the machine. And it was no problem. And it was way easier than with the old scheme because you just have to say, okay, please stop replicating from there, continue replicating from the other server. And it just works because the replication IDs are all where, um, always and everywhere the same. Good, that's good to hear. So what about other incompatibilities, I mean, details even. Yeah, um, I remember that I was, uh, that someone asked this during the migration event in, in Brussels. And um, I was asked whether we had to change anything in our code. And my answer was very short. I said, not a single line. And uh, this actually more or less um, holds until today. So even three months um, in MariaDB, we, there was no real obligation to change any database code. 
only one thing we found in the meantime, and that uh, was a feature that we introduced for one certain query where we wanted to restrict the query time. It could, this query can take quite a long time, and um, if it takes too long, we want to interrupt it. And we implemented this with the MySQL um, syntax, um, which uses this comment style stuff. And um, we found that this actually is incompatible with MariaDB. MariaDB simply does it with another uh, syntax. Thing is that while this feature was implemented um, in the code and released, it was never enabled. So we never ran into any compatibility problems in our production system because we simply didn't use this certain this this certain syntax style now we changed it to the mariadb um to the mariadb syntax and released this and even enabled this um in, in the meantime uh, so we are actually using this and um, um until today this is the only part the only thing that we changed in our source code so far and you might know that our, our application, which has quite a history, the code base is some 25 years old, and it has um, database queries of totally different um, um, ages, so to say, and eras of how to connect to the database. We have lots of raw SQL um, the statements which are simply written into the code. We also have um, the Java persistence architecture abstraction. We use um, the Eclipse Link JPA implementation, and um, there were no changes at all. Actually, for Eclipse Link, you can't even say that you're using um, MariaDB uh, because uh, the SQL it uses is so compatible between MariaDB and MySQL that you just say, okay, I have this MySQL style server here and so there was no change needed at all so speaking of java did, did you change uh, drivers as well yeah this was one of the things um, that uh, we did not change in advance to the migration we knew that mariadb has their own jdbc driver but uh, we found out very soon in our tests that the MySQL driver that we used had no problems connecting to the MariaDB server. And then we decided, okay, um, um, to keep the target moving um, as the, the target movements as small as possible, we do not touch the um, JDBC driver for the actual migration. We migrate with the old uh, MySQL driver and then someone after the migration, we will switch to the MariaDB um, driver, knowing that it is way more modern and that it um, has many um, many optimizations compared to the old MySQL driver, so that actually this has a value in its own to change the driver. And we started this, I think, um, about a month ago, and <laughs> we found out that um, Actually, it is more or less a drop-in replacement um, um, when you take into consideration that um, when you have such an old code base and you usually work with a MySQL driver ever and you never have had anything else in your code, then you find that two or three places where you have this implicit assumption, oh, it's the MySQL driver. And now that it is the MariaDB driver, you have to make changes in the code to actually use it in these in these places or to le at least to use it correctly in these places and to not perform any dirty hacks there and we also found out that our quite old mysql driver we didn't use uh, the current version but we also had a quite um, quite old uh, mysql jdbc driver in our code base and that old driver had here and there some relaxed um considerations on correct usage so there were some calls um, some combinations of certain sql queries and certain um, api calls that we used with this so execute query versus execute update um, and stuff like this where we um, where we did queries with api calls that were 
um, actually not compatible. But the old driver did it nevertheless. The MariaDB driver is much less relaxed about this. So we got some um, exceptions in our code at these places and had to dig into this and change the um, change the way we call the stuff just to fulfill the specifications actually and what i learned is that if we had um, upgraded to a more modern mysql driver we would have had the same problems because the newer mysql drivers are also much more strict about this stuff okay so um before concluding with, I will bombard you with four detailed questions. Uh, is, is, was that sort of most of your overall uh, uh, insights or anything else that you, uh, before a summary, want to say? Um, regarding um, um, uh, regarding um, actual um, um topics that we had to consider or that we had to work on i think i can't say anymore because there is nothing more um you see we always had uh, the idea or we had we hoped that this migration would not be a big deal implementation wise so that we uh, can perform more or less a drop-in replacement. Of course, we knew that a complete drop-in would not be possible because, of course, there are differences. If there haven't been any differences, uh, there would be no need to change in the first place. But um, actually, this hope has been fulfilled to the most possible... Let me ask the, let me ask the, summary, let me ask the summary questions. Then yes. I'll provide you with four, four of them. Did the migration hold what it promised? I would say yes. Uh, we wanted an, um, hopefully, um, um, we wanted a not too complicated migration, which moves us onto a modern platform, which is actually maintained. Um, and that worked out quite well, actually. Okay. So what about performance issues? We, apart from the from the problem that I talked about, we had no performance issues, and for certain operations, uh, we even had a small performance gain, not big, but um, it hasn't been, it didn't become worse, and it has become even a bit better, and that only by exchanging the system, not changing anything else. Uh, so then, third question. Uh, repeat, what was the goal? Why did you want to switch? Yeah, we wanted to switch because um, MySQL 5.7 is a dead platform. It is not maintained anymore. The last security releases have been in August 2023, if I remember correctly. Um, so um, there was no way moving forward. And of course, if you have a platform which evolves and the software which is actively developed and maintained by us, uh, we also need actively maintained components that we rely upon. Uh, we simply can't stay with a database which becomes more and more legacy. Uh, if you do this for a long enough time, sometime in the future, you won't be able to install your database server on a, um, um, on a modern Linux um, um, distribution because it simply um, uh, doesn't work anymore due to library issues or whatever. So. There is a need to go forward, and we had to go forward from this MySQL 5.7 platform. And uh, the MariaDB, um, for us, MariaDB seemed to be the right decision because it is actively maintained. Um, we know the person who is behind this, and we know that um, he knows the job and knows what to do regarding databases. Greetings to Monty. And, um, and I think that also has been fulfilled because from 
what I saw, for example, in uh, the issue tracker of MariaDB and also what I learned from the discussions in Brus Brussels in February, um, there was a quite um, quite lively discussion about points, about development, about implementation of database stuff. And this is what we hope from our database, um, from our database um, 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 source, that the people there are also interested in maintaining their system and bringing the system forward and in actually knowing their job. And um, our impression is that this works very well at MariaDB. Thank you. So that sounds good. So, so final question, would you do it again? <laughs> Um, yes, I would do it again, and I think I would do it again even this way, traveling to Brussels and doing a live migration on stage uh, with um, a live system which actually is in production use, but I hope uh, that I don't have to do it again in the foreseeable future, and I think that with MariaDB, actually I won't have to do it this way anytime soon again. And this is the thing which makes me very happy, actually. Thank you, Dirk. Very, very good use case and very interesting migration. So thanks for, for taking the effort to contact us and to, to do all of this migration. And happy to talk to you anytime again, uh, regardless of whether you do just a point update or, or <laughs> bigger, bigger thing. So thank you. Yes. Kai, thank you too. It has been a pleasure to do this together with you and it is always a pleasure to talk to you and be assured that I uh, will give you um, sometime or the other short information. I'll drop you a note about any issues uh, that we face being positive or negative and hopefully mostly positive, I think. Great. Thank you, Dirk. Thank you too. The MariaDB Foundation is the global contact point for collaboration on MariaDB Server. Our work is made possible thanks to the support of our sponsors.